Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I am joined by two of the most delightful people you will ever meet. Now, one of them I've been a fan of for the longest time. I've been looking forward to interviewing her. And I'm so excited that finally, Beulah Chibu is here with us on Hello Nigeria. Thank you for joining us, Beulah. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> and right beside me, I have Edwin Iwi Igodala. Thank you, Edwin, for joining us yet again. Thank you for having me. So welcome. as you can see, this beautiful young man and woman are both amputees and they are part of the Iran foundation actually Bula is the brain behind the Irede foundation and they're going to be sharing with us their story and leaving with us a little bit of their positive energy I guess I'll start before we come to you Edwin let's start with Bula Bula how are you I'm fine is this your first time on TV um it's been a long time it's been a well, long been time a long that time you've been on, on TV. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. Let's talk about, you know, the first time. Can you remember the first time you found out that you had to wear prosthesis? Tell us about it. Can you remember how long ago it was? I can't, but my dad said that he asked me if I wanted to walk. And I said, I really wanted to because I didn't want to be the only person that crawled till I was like 28. <laughs> <laughs> so then he said that he actually talked to me like I was an adult. And he said, this is what has to happen if you want to walk. And I'm like, okay, whatever it takes. And that was what happened at that time. Wow. And um, do you under did you understand then, and do you understand now, what exactly happened? Yes. So tell us about it. So when I was born, I, I had two missing bones. The patella, which is a kneecap, and the tibia, one of the bones in the lower part of your leg. And so, it wasn't... I wasn't going to be able to walk with, without those bones. So they had to amputate me for me to be able to walk and live a long life and happy life. So how did you feel the first time you woke up and you found your leg like this? I felt normal. Okay. You felt but normal? There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's the spirit. I'll still go back to you, Beulah, and to speak with you. But let's speak with Edwin. Edwin, let's go back to your own story. Now, I know this story because we've had Edwin on Hello Nigeria, I think about two years ago. Yeah. But, you know, the first day we met Edwin, it was your energy that pulled me to you. Edwin left this place and we're all feeling like sunshine, just like you, Beulah is already making us feel. Let's talk about your journey and the first time. What exactly led to your amputation? So I was involved in a motor accident on the... 18th of December 2015. Um, my arm was badly damaged. It had to be amputated. Um, I signed off my consent form. Almost immediately, the doctors told me the arm had to go. Uh, I don't know if you have enough time for me to recap on all the events that took place around the, the accident and the amputation and life afterwards, but hey, here we are. There are some things that happened as well, you know, during the process. Okay. There are some things that you got to find out, you know, that was one of the, the problems with our healthcare sector. Oh, that, oh, yes. oh okay. So the, the accident happened at about 5.30 in the evening. I was traveling from Wari to Benin. It happened along Benin Sapele Expressway. I was driving. I had eight other people in the vehicle. It was a Sienna bus. Um, a truck shoved us off the road. Um, I was on the side that the truck shoved. So in the process of shoving us off, my arm got badly damaged. I didn't get transport from the scene of the accident to a medical facility um, in time. So I was, badly, I was badly injured and I was bleeding profusely. Um, luckily for me, I was with my elder brother, my sister and friends. So eventually we got a taxi to take me to Benin City. But the first medical facility we visited in Benin City rejected me outright. There was, it wasn't a case of, oh, let's, let's administer first aid or let's stabilize the patient. It was just, na bone injury, can't go UBTH or general hospital, you know, get everything we do. And from there, we went to general hospital. They were on strike. 
Um, from General Hospital, we had to go to UBTH, where I eventually got medical attention. But at that time, we were already approaching midnight. So I had lost so much blood that the emphasis wasn't on the arm. The emphasis was on saving my life because I was already sleeping into coma. I was losing pulse. I was pale. And in hindsight, or if I were to compare with a better system, I would say the arm could, might have been saved because as at the time I got to the hospital, I still had sensation in my fingers. So I could still move my fingers. However, because the emphasis was placed on saving the life and not the arm, by the following morning, the arm was dead. Hmm. Wow. 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 So after all that, everything that happened, your experience, and I'm wondering, how did you go about admitting to yourself that this has happened and this is how my life is now? So I, I have no regrets in life. I, I, I learned from it. So you, you know what they say about um, your life experience? As you go through life, experiences gear you up for that which, it, which may eventually happen. So I think I had a foundation that put me on a pedestal where I took life as it came. So I am not one with could haves and should haves and would haves. So I just picked them up as life lessons. So when the doctor came to me and told me, oh, um, you have a 0.001% of saving your arm, and the ideal thing for us to do to save your life would be to amputate. In my brain, I was already thinking of a prosthetic limb and how dope it was going to be. Are you kidding? That is the thing. So I promised you that Edwin was, Edwin is literally one of the happiest people you will meet. And I guess you're seeing it now. I mean, the last time Edwin came here, I signed on his prosthetic arm, right? Yes, yes. Wow. Okay, let's go back to Beulah. Beulah, you know, when you started growing up and started getting used to using your prosthetic leg, did you at any point ever feel different? Did your friends make you feel different? Not really my friends, my frenemies. Hmm, tell us about wow. your frenemies. Um, even till now, um, people will talk behind my back. Even some people are just very mean. What are the meanest things they say to you or they say about you that you get to hear? Um, I don't, I think they're all on the same level. Just, they're just bad. They're just bad. So how do you now deal with it in a way that, you know, does it, how does it make you feel? And how do you deal with it still going on and being yourself, regardless of all the rubbish they have to say? Um, <laughs> You're watching yourself playing on TV. <laughs> no, the... So do, 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 first of all, does it make you feel really bad when you hear these things? I get pissed off. I want to punch the person. But do you end up punching them? Not really. Good. I'm glad that you don't punch them. <laughs> but you know that you are bigger than all of the things that they're saying, all right? And a lot of you, it's because you're a really charming and talented girl. So when you're ta char charming and talented, people would always want to say things about you. Tell us about some of the things, the amazing things you can do. People would assume that, oh, if you have a prosthetic leg, you can't do this, you can't do that. Tell us about some of the amazing things you can do. Um, I basically talk to my mom. So one of the things, if yeah, and I'm pretty out there. One of the things you should really do is make a strong relationship with your parents. Um, I tell my mom pretty much everything, even my dad. So it makes it easier for them to support me, make me feel better about myself. Great. So what are the things you enjoy doing now that, you know, you, I, I, I saw a video of you swimming. Do you still swim? Um, we had to stop, but I think we're going to start again soon. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. So, so now, that's a video of you swimming over there. Wow. Uh, what else do you enjoy doing for fun when you just want to, you know, relax? What are the things you enjoy doing? I like dancing. I like singing. And apparently I'm the drama queen. Drama oh, nice. queen. <laughs> nice. This is you interesting. You see why I said I'm a fan? <laughs> Okay, but Viola, I have this very um, interesting question for you. Aside all this happiness and joy that you feel about yourself, which is great, are there times that you have fears? Yes. Okay. And what are the things that you fear? 
I fear being humiliated. Um, if you have been humiliated by people, you know, saying mean things about you. Especially the ones that are close to me. People like my best friends. Yes, and kudos to my best friends. Um, my siblings, my cousins, basically anyone that's close to me. That's a very valid fear because when you love people, you give them the power to either hurt you or to make you. Now you've, you've expressed that you fear that people would humiliate you. What would you say to people? How would you like people who are not amputees to behave to people who are amputees? I feel like everyone is human. And God says respect everyone around you, even people younger than you. So I feel like you should treat everyone with equality. Like you were saying earlier on the show, because people have tribal marks, you don't have to discriminate against them. You should actually try and help them to be a better version of themselves. And it's the same treatment that we should extend to people who are, you know, amputees who are, who are, who are with or without prosthetics because they're not different. I mean, you swim, I swim. You're a drama queen, I'm a drama queen. We My are darling, literally the same. You swim, I don't swim. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lazy auntie. <laughs> Don't sleep. I'm scared of trying. So you are even greater than me on that part. <laughs> now, Bula, you are the brain behind the Irede Foundation. Mom had you, went through this challenge, and decided that because she'd been able to mark a lot of remarkable success stories with you, she started the foundation to help other people who are, you know, amputees. So maybe I should ask Edwin, and then we'll come back to you, to tell us about, you know, the Irede Foundation. We know that Out on a Limb is coming up in a bit. Tell us about it and how people can be a part of it. So the Irede Foundation is an indigenous NGO that was set up to support child amputees. So what we do is we provide, we educate, we empower, we educate, and we advocate for children living with limb loss. Say we were, we were, we were founded in 2013, and in that time frame, we've been able to empower 82 families with... 66 limbs wow. and 153 locations, if I'm correct, off the top of my head. I think, I think that's, that's the stats that we that's, have that's fantastic at, at, already. at the moment. And we're 100% we're self-funded. Um, we get... So April marks the month of people living with limb loss. So every year we try to push for awareness with people living with limb loss and we tag our, our yearly event out on a limb where we basically walk for five kilometers to raise awareness about people living with limb loss and get people to make donations, encourage them to assist and try to make the world a better place for people living with disability. Okay, so you already mentioned that because that would actually lead to my next question. Okay. What are the things that you feel the government should do for people who are amputees in Nigeria, especially the kids? Okay, so now it's, it's interesting because um, this year's Out on a Limb is, is themed um, inclusiveness, which, is, which was born out of the fact that the president recently signed into law the disability bill. It's a step in the right direction now that we have the bill. So we know that if you own a public facility, a, a, a financial institution, a religious house, or uh, uh, if an educational facility or a hospital, there has to be accessibility. So if someone is on a wheelchair, he or she has to be able to access your banking hall. And these are, these are things that we ought to have done a long time ago that we're not doing. But it's great, you know, that we're creating awareness and we're making, you know, moves towards this. Which leads me to asking you, when is this happening? Where is it happening? How can people be a part of it? Out on the Limb is happening in 30 locations across the globe. Right now, we have 14 locations on ground. We're still expecting 16 to come through. In Lagos, we have three locations, Mushi, Ikorodu, and Ikoyi. We have Abelkuta, Ibadan, Jigawa, Playtu, Kaduna. Um, and I'm sure there'll be more information on your social media pages, right? Yes. Um, you can follow us at the Rede Foundation on Instagram, at the Rede on Twitter. Our Facebook is the Rede Foundation. 
All right. Um, our website is thereadyfoundation.org. Fantastic. Bula, final words to anyone, you know, an amputee or the parent of an amputee, or how you want people to support the Ready Foundation. Um, I feel like nobody should ever give up and that I feel it's good to be nice to people. All right. That is your take home word for today. Be nice to people. Be a little kinder to people. And if we all did that, we'll make the world a better place. Now, we've been joined by representatives of the Irede Foundation happening in a few days um, at the Irede Foundation on all social media portals and www.theiredefoundation.com for more information. .org. .org, I beg your pardon, for more information on how to be a part of this work. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.